Hi, this is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations. I'm here with today's live stream. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm here today to teach you a free online class, um, kind of a sampling of what I do for my customers. And today we're working on a pillar pop-up window card. It's something I've seen a couple other demonstrators do online, and I thought it was really cool and thought I'd give it a try today. If you're watching from the United States, remember to type in hashtag prize patrol to be entered into the drawing that I'm going to do at the end of this video. So stick around. We're making two cards. This is one of them or something similar. And then we're going to do another one where I'm going to turn it portrait. So I think you're going to like it. So this one, it has an easel on the back so it can proudly stand up on someone's desk. And then it has these pillars on the inside, which will allow it to go flat so you can stick it in a mailbox. So, you know, super cool, right? So let me put you down to my desk and we'll get started. Okay, so here is our card. These products are out of the mini catalog. I'll turn that banner off so you can see all of my desk. And in the mini catalog, we're working with, that's going to card number two, we're going to use this tulip paper. But for this one, I'm using the On the Horizon or Beyond the Horizon DSP, which is part of the New Horizons suite. This is one of those things where you can put in one item number and you can get everything here shown um, just by this one number here, you get the complete collection with the ribbons, the embellishments, paper, the whole shebang. But I love this paper because it makes some beautiful scenes. And this one here, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a meadow. There's little flowers in the back. And then the other one um, that I made a different card out of, it looked like a beach scene. I mean, it can look like all sorts of things. So I think you're going to like that. And then the stamp set I'm using is this in the moment. And I absolutely love this stamp set. I use this a lot. I've often been told that this little one with the dog here reading a book looked like me. <laughs> but um, maybe that's just because her hair's up in a bun. <laughs> but we're, that's the stamp set we're going to use. And then I had to bring out my rectangle dies. Now, of course, you can cut this on your trimmer, but you're going to need to cut an inside and an outside. And so I'll show you on the outside frame, this part that pops up here, I'm using two rectangle dies. Now you could obviously cut the outside on your trimmer, no problem. But then you can also cut the inside. You would measure over. So say you have your trimmer here and I want something out of the middle. I'm gonna say, okay, I want it over half of an inch. I want it one inch up. I'm gonna to go to the, you know, three and three quarters. And then I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. I'm gonna start where that one ended, come across, do the same thing here. So it's not as easy, but it's definitely doable. And I just love these dies because it does all this work for me. You know, you'd see I, I didn't want to cut it too close because I didn't want to hang off the edge. But a pair of paper snips will obviously bring that in. And if somebody needs to know the measurements of the inside, um, there's a diagram that has all the measurements of our dies. Or I can obviously give them to you measured. But that's how you would do it with your trimmer. But I totally recommend the rectangle dies. They are used for all sorts of things. At first, I wasn't going to get them because I thought it's a rectangle. I cut that with my trimmer all the time, right? Well, then they put stitching in it. <laughs> so, And it stitches inside and outside. So it makes it really super cool. And you'll see that when we pop this out. Now, it does have to be pushed kind of along the edge. Because of the stitching, it kind of gets a more of a grip. So I kind of just run my finger along the edge to loosen it out. Okay. 
Okay, so now you can see, focus you here. See this, they're stitching inside and outside of my frame. Isn't that cool? And it's obviously, you know, measured perfectly because these come in increments. And so my quarter inch, I don't have to worry about because it's obviously cut that way. Let me show you. I'm gonna, the dies were a little funky at first um, to figure out which ones I had to use. But once it clicked, it made sense. So here's my other piece. This is the designer series paper I'm going to be using for my card. And it's going to go here. So I needed the smallest and the biggest die to do my outside ring. And then I needed the next size down and the next size up from those two to get me this piece in the middle. And I skipped one which is why it's got a thickness to it. It's not just a quarter inch, it's a half of an inch. Does that make sense? We've got the bigger one and the smallest one of our set. And then the next size, you know, this way, <laughs> up and down. And then we're skipping one in the middle to make this thicker. And this is, like I said, that Beyond the Horizons designer series paper. Nope. I totally need to do that. There's the inside frame and the outside frame. So let me know that that makes sense. See, so here's the, the, the inside frame and the outside frame. And if you wanted to know, you know, what numbers those are as far as working down from the outside, if you were counting from the largest, with this one being one, I used two, three, skipped four, and then did five and six. And that got me my frames. Then my regular, like my base, rather than being a folded base, it's going to be a straight base and then the easel that's going to go on the back. So this is just four and a quarter by five and a half. And then, of course, the next layer, I've done a few of these. We know this one is going to be four inches by five and a quarter which meant I kind of was doing these at approximately, um, what, three and a half by four and three quarter. You know, so I'm, I skipped one again here and then came down my quarter inches. And that's going to get me my scenery. Then I wanted to stamp one of the girls. So I've got her stamped and colored and we're going to fussy cut that out. And then this is going to go on the back. And then I have our piece for the easel that's also going to go on the back. Fairly simple so far, right? Then we're going to create our pillars. And don't let them scare you. <laughs> they are very simple to do. And I'm going to show you that on camera twice so you will know what we're doing. Um, Let's just get our basics out of the way. We know we want this one down flat. Okay, and then this one, because I'm centering in something, I'm going to go ahead and use my liquid glue so that I have my wiggle room. If I can get one that's not clogged. This one's running low. And that's why I store them on my desk 
in these little holders. Some people use a shot glass. I made this out of just paper and the tutorial is on my YouTube channel. But if I keep the glue stored to where the point is down, I get to use the most out of it. And then I've got this other one that I made that's also on my YouTube channel, kind of a little worse for wear, but this one holds the glue dots, the tear and tape, my dimensionals, I mean, all that all goes in one little handy, dandy little case. The point is, store your glue with the point down, and it will more likely puddle at the end. Now this is going to go on the back, but I'm going to do my stamping before I adhere, because we know there's always that chance of doing a boo-boo. I'm going to try not to get a halo. Normally I would wipe that off with tissue or something. Yay! It worked. <laughs> so I can go ahead and adhere this one. That's going to go here. And I could go on either side, really. And then we have our girl that's going to sit over here. And I'm just going to fussy cut her out. It's not hard because she is pretty simple. And I don't need my edges to be exact. If I did need them to be exact and it was closed, um, I could run it on the Brother Scan and Cut. But because there's no definitive edges and things are open, the Scan and Cut wouldn't work really well on this. So scissors it is. Okay, so I'm just roughing her up and sticking her there. Might need to run over and grab a new glue. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry about that. I always have lots of it on hand. Just didn't happen to have it at my desk. So I'm only putting it on the edge because obviously I don't want adhesive in the middle because we don't want it sticking to the back. It's going to go right here. Hi, Nancy. You're not too late. I mean, we did do a little bit so far, but the hard part we haven't done yet, and it's always available on replay. Feel free to pop on back to YouTube, and you can catch it there. But so far, I just cut my frame using my rectangle stitched dies, and then I've made my card base just with a single base. It doesn't open because we're going to do an easel. Now, for the easel... I decided that I wanted it to go here, but if I went four inches and then tried to do a half and a half and a half, which would be, you know, my, this part here of my easel, that wouldn't work. So I cut it down. This is now three and a quarter. So I'm going to bring that in and we're going to do three and a quarter. That's how tall it's going to be. And then I'm going to go over half of an inch. That's going to be my first fold. And then I'm going to go over another half of an inch. So now I'm at four and a quarter. And then I want to go over a quarter. No, a half. I want to go over, yeah, a quarter, three and a quarter. <laughs> I'm confusing myself. Okay, so I'm going over a quarter of an inch and then three inches. So four and a half plus three is going to give me seven and a half. So that should give me my three and a quarter. Now, whenever these things like totally confuse me, like when I'm on camera trying to do math, you can always do this where I would butt it up 
over here so that I'm flush and then I can come in at my three and a quarter. See, so I was right. So I've got kind of a bigger adhesive on the end than I thought. But that's all there is to making any, you know, the the frame. Kind of a matchbook kind of look, I think. Irish soda bread. Ooh, that sounds good. Too bad New York's so far away. You would have to put me up in a guest room. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to... Burnish my fold lines. And then I want it to attach up here. I like the idea of people being able to display their card once they get it. So that's why I thought this was really pretty. And making a picture frame kind of look out of it, it just screams that it needs to be, you know, displayed, right? <laughs> Okay, so that's it all glued together. Pretty simple. Then I'm just going to adhere it to the back. And I'm going to go almost all the way to the bottom. I've got, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch right in here. But I want it fairly close to the bottom. I don't want to go exact because I don't want it to fall over forward. But... Has everybody seen the retreat I'm doing in May? I'm renting an Airbnb and it's a big cabin. It even has high has Wi-Fi internet. Um, but it's really out in the country where you can't like see any neighbors. It looks really cool. And we're gonna do a three-night retreat in May. Not Mother's Day weekend, but the next one. Okay, so that's where that is. Got me so far? Now we just need our pillars. And so for those, I have two and three eighths by three and a quarter. Now my three and a quarter was about the distance it's going to take to fit in here. Then I decided that I wanted it to fit, you know, so I need a half of an inch maybe on all four sides. So a half of an inch times the four sides gets me two. But then I needed something to connect it when it's going to, you know, the two sides mount together to give us our square. And I didn't want to make it a half of an inch because I wanted it to have a little bit of grace in case I didn't get exactly square. So I did three eighths and that's just basically just a titch under the two and a half, just to make sure I had some grace at the end there. Then I'm just going to score this every half inch on both of them. So it's going to be that tall. So I'm going to go half one, one and a half, and two. See, so this last panel, it's almost half of an inch, but not quite. And I'm going to do that on both of them. Half, one, one and a half, and two. I love my scoreboard because my score lines are more exact that way. It can be done on a trimmer. I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. Not as exact with the trimmer. Some people are, I'm not. Okay. So now this piece here, I'm going to add tear and tape and then hook it to here. So I will have my pillar. And then I need two of them.
Now, the other girl I watched said she would put two of them here and she was cutting the edge off with scissors. I don't know that it's that big of an idea, a deal. You know, I definitely want to use tear and tape because it is going to get movement. But I don't know that it'd be so much I would need that much. Now, in order to make sure that it's going to be square, remember, I like to lay this down so that the sticky part is here. And then I'm just going to fold this closed. So now it folds that way and then it's going to fold that way. So I know that it's going to do what I need it to do. Okay, same thing with this one. See, that's why I do that. This one's not square. Okay. Anybody else use undo? I love this stuff. I found out about this when I was scrapbooking because you can use it on photos and it doesn't destroy it. Now, the reason it didn't go square is something's not straight. I'm trying to make sure that it is. Okay. And I would normally dry that with my heat tool because it just evaporates if I leave it for a long time but the heat tool speeds it up. But now both of my pillars <laughs> will fold both ways. Okay. Now we want it to attach to our frame. And so that just means I want adhesive on this side and that side. Simple, right? And again, you could double this up and, you know, clean the edges and cut them off with scissors. But I'm basically skipping this one and then I'm going to adhere it here. And you could put the first side on and then put your tear and tape on after it's already on your frame. If that's easier for you. Dogs are going bonkers. I apologize. I don't know what they're barking at. The product I was using, does that mean the undo? <laughs> this is how I repair all of my goofs. And I found it, you know, at the big box store, but I can also get it on Amazon. I've got a link on my page. Um, I recommend certain products like my mini magnets and, um, you know, some of the stuff I use that is not Stampin' Up! related, I have a section called Products I Recommend under the shop on my blog. And so all the links for there are there. Okay. Now we just want to attach this. And if you don't have fingernails and you need to get this off, I totally recommend to take your pick tool. Because you can just kind of pinch it and it pops right off. Now it's not going to matter what way I am as far as up and down. But I do want them both to kind of fold the same way. Because I want it to to fold like that. Is that making sense? I want them both to do this. So that's why I was making sure that it was over there. So it's basically putting your adhesive strip to the outside, I guess if that's a way to look at it. And mine's not exactly centered, you know, you, it doesn't really need to be, but if you were worried about that, you can center it.
And now I'm ready for the next piece. See how quickly this is going together? Okay, now I want this to center in my card. And so I'm kind of going to hover to try to see where my spaces are kind of even. And I placed one side. Now I'm going to try to place the other with its square. And then I can flatten it out. And that's when I'm going to go ahead and burnish my adhesive. once I know I'm centered. See? Okay, so that's all there is to it. That's why I've got a second card because I thought that is so easy. So I've got more pieces over here. These I haven't quite die cut yet, so we'll have to do those because I couldn't use the dies on both pieces at the same time. But remember I said we're skipping the largest one. We're going to use this one. And then I'm going to use this one. Skipping one. And then I'm going to do this one and this one. So my two inside ones are going to be on my designer series paper and the two outside ones are going to be on my cardstock. So this is our cut and emboss machine. I'm using the larger one because my paper is a little larger, but we do have this little one. I don't know if you can see. It's, it's a little portable one and it takes dies up to three inches wide. So it probably would hold that. Yeah, see most of the rectangles will go through it. But I probably didn't cut my paper narrow enough. But the reason I'm pulling out the mini is this one's on sale right now. Right now, this mini is on sale for 48. It's normally 60. That's a 20% discount. And then if you become a demonstrator, you get an additional discount on top of that, not only on the die cutting machine, but on the dies that are on sale as well. Because they picked out, I don't know, about a dozen different sets that are just the right size to fit through there. And they're on sale too. Buried my stuff. And then as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, they sell a lunch bag. And I'm told the lunch bag fits that little mini machine perfectly. So if you wanted to take it to retreat, it fits in a cute little bag. Should be right. It's feeling a little stiff, so I'm second guessing myself. But I was right. Ooh, I pushed something. Oh, I turned off the TV. <laughs> I'm using my TV as my second monitor. Yeah, that one should fit. Okay, so with the mini, they come exactly the same way and that the plates are numbered. We have the base plate. Here it shows the use with a die. And so it's saying the number one is on the bottom. Then I'm gonna put a number two, which is one of the clear ones. Then I'm gonna put the paper and then my dies over that.
Now, if I wanted to make sure that they stay put, especially on this little one, I can use a little bit of washi tape. This is some retired washi tape. Let me find the end. I tell you, there's something about being on camera that makes me an idiot. I don't know what the trick is. If I wasn't on camera, I'd find the end right away. Yes, the demo discount makes it less than the 48. Actually, on our team page, I have a little chart that shows the cost of, you know, like some of the bundles, you save over $20 by, by bundling the, the bundle together, and then you get the 20% discount, and then you put your demo discount on top of that. It's just an awesome deal. And there's so many gals on my team that don't necessarily have parties. They just want these super great deals and the first crack at all the new product. So we do accept hobby demos. If you don't want to sell, but you want that awesome discount, we can hook you up. Okay. Now, when we go to put this through the machine, we want to be sure that we are staggering the plates. I don't know if you can quite see that but I'm not putting them in even. I'm putting them in kind of a jar. And then it's just gonna crank right through. Come on. <laughs> it does, I swear. Okay. And then it's got this adapter plate if you wanted to use the half-wide embossing folders that go through that as well. You know, sometimes because of the stitching, you may need to look at the back and make sure that it's gone all the way through. Yeah, see a little bit of a... So sometimes I'll run it forward and backward to make sure that I've got that good and cut. Sorry, I cut it on the one over there because I didn't want to jiggle the desk anymore. Make you guys seasick. In order to have you close enough to see the product with the card, it's not zoomed far enough out to use the die cutting machine without taking up like the entire screen. And jiggling the table. We're just back to, we've got these pieces again with our two frames. And I'm using this one just to use kind of the sky, I guess. I'm using the blue just on the back. But on the other side, I'm using the flowers for the back, like what she's looking at through the window. That. And then I've got my four and a quarter by five and a half, four by five and a quarter. Got my two frames, the girl I'm gonna put on the front, and then the message part for the back and then my easel and my pillars. Now you could decide if you wanted, didn't want to do the easel on the back, you can make this a regular A-frame card, but I'm going to go ahead and show you putting this part together again with the pillar so you know what we're doing there. And this is just because the first one was so fast. Those of you who logged on a little bit late kind of missed the first part of it. 
So if you're watching it replay, you know, go ahead and type in hashtag replay and let me know, but you can fast forward. But the rest of you who are live, you want to stick around and enter in hashtag prize patrol and see if you won today's drawing so I could mail you these cards. And then you would have a firsthand example of how to make these. Shortcut here. Normally I would go all the way around her hand and stuff, but you get the idea. I'm turning the paper instead of the scissors because it's much easier to hold the scissors at an angle that you're comfortable with and then turn the paper so that your scissors are always in a comfortable position. So we'll put the base together and then our frame together. So you know, this one's gonna go portrait. So when I put her, I'm going to center her down here. Now I can position her on the outside of the frame or I can position her on the inside of the frame. Kind of works both ways. So you can just decide which way you like it. But then we're just going to adhere her with a little bit of adhesive only along the bottom because we don't want it to interfere in the middle. We don't want her sticking to the tulips. Now we're ready for our pillars. So again, same thing. I've got two and three eighths. So I've got my half inch increments and the three eighths inch to fold over. And then I just measured what would fit in here. So I just took a ruler, you know, laid it down and went, okay, well, about four inches, maybe four and a quarter would be right. And so that's all I did to calculate it, to flip it on its end. So again, I'm just going to score this half, one, one and a half, and two. So I'm just burnishing the score lines. I find it doesn't make too much difference as to what direction I go with cardstock. With designer series paper, it can make a difference. Um, this is what we call a mountain in that we scored from this side. We made a valley and a mountain. So we just reverse it. So if I made a valley, I'm gonna turn that into a mountain when scoring. Again, the, the, the idea is that when you made your valley, you broke down the fibers of the paper. And so it's already started to go that direction and you don't want it to, it'll crack the, the finish, I guess, to the designer series paper. And sometimes it will show a little bit of white from the inside. So I do make sure that I go mountain to valley when doing designer series paper for sure because we don't want those little boo-boos. We spend too much time on these things to have to tear it apart and start over. Although, as you saw from my last one, it doesn't need to be totally torn apart. Just a little bit of undo when we're all fixed up. <laughs> okay, so I'm putting this on the 3 eighths 
side. I'm going to fold it flush and then I'm going to fold this over. Again, you could cut it straight with scissors because you can see my adhesive hangs off just a, a little tiny bit, but I can just move my finger and fold that in. It doesn't, it's up to you how you want to do it. It's a little faster for me on camera to just tear. This one's a little over. Pull that back in. And now my pillars go both ways. So now we're ready to go ahead and adhere them to the card. We want opposite sides but I figured what I would show you, maybe it's easier this way. Cause remember when I said, when I put them on, they both had to fold the same way. But if we don't add the tear and tape until last, you definitely know what direction they need to go and what side the tape goes on. But I'm just gonna peel that off and then I'm gonna try to center it in here. So I've got them both kind of folding that way. And then remember if, we're, if our pillars are upright, it's the top that needs the adhesive. Anybody have any questions? You made it. Do you craft along with me? Or you made it to watch? Because <laughs> I know you're going to make this card. I try to give you guys the measurements ahead of time if you wanted to craft with me. But it's always there if you're watching a replay. A little low, because I'm not looking at it square. Okay. So there we go. There's our second card, just turned portrait style. Now I can do the same thing with my um, easel on the back. Okay, I did let's see, three and a quarter, went over a half, went over a half. And then I need three and a quarter from here, seven and a half. And again, those score lines are in the di dimensions, in the description, sorry. All of my measurements and score lines are all in the description. Apparently I got a little bit of ink on this one, not a big deal, we'll just put that to the inside. So again, it's kind of a matchbook. I have an M here at the bottom. That's going to be the part the easel stands up on. And then I have a flap that I'm going to adhere this to. So that it's an A. Triangle, whatever we want to call it. My 
finger under there and stopped it. I'm glad you're going to try it, Nancy. I hope you come back into the realm of creativity on Facebook and share a photo with us so we can all ooh and awe of what you chose to make it with. Because this can be done with so many different things. I mean, you know, I used the lady standing here, but we could easily have, you know, the little penguin or we could have, you know, any of our characters. I mean, the little chicken would be cute. There's so many things you could do it. I can't like I can't even explain how much you could do with this. Okay, so again, I would want to adhere it just a little bit from the bottom, and then I would just cut a piece that would fit here. It wouldn't give me much of a writing space, but it would give me some. Again, this is not a big deal, but if it bothered you that I was not exact there, just trim that right off. Okay, this time we do want to make sure we're at the bottom because we don't want her standing on her head. Good thing I checked. We want it down at the bottom here. Going up maybe a sixteenth, eighth of an inch from the bottom. And there it's ready to stand up. So there's our portrait version, and then we also have the landscaped version. Now again, to figure out what would go here, I would take my ruler and we would see that my space between the top of my easel and the top of my card is two and a quarter. So that means the piece I'm going to make to go in here will be two inches because I'm going down a quarter of an inch. This is four and a quarter, so it's going to be four. So my piece at the top is two inches by four inches. I mean, I can just give you measurements, but I like to tell you guys how I came up with it because it makes it so much easier to adapt things and to look at photos on Pinterest if they, you know, just posted the photo and not the link to their blog with directions, you can kind of figure it out. And I could, you know, just write in here or I could stamp into there. And that would be my card. So what do you think? Who's going to give this a try? And here's my other one. So remember, you're hanging out for our drawing for Prize Patrol. So everybody who signed on a little bit late, you want to make sure that you go in there and type in hashtag Prize Patrol. I'm going to pull up my second monitor. Carrie, do you have the stitched rectangle dies? Because if you have those, there's any number of stamp sets that will make this work. Okay, so I have six, seven, seven entries so far in our prize patrol drawing. I'm gonna go ahead and share that. So that's my face big, yuck. I go over here and click on it. There we go. Oh, congratulations, Sharon. You're today's winner of our prize patrol. So you win today's cards. How exciting is that? my cursor back on this screen. 
So again, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you learned something new and I hope you give it a try and you come back to Facebook to the realm of creativity and show us what you created. Thank you for joining me. And again, if you need anything that we used here, it's all available in my store um, and will be on my blog. So thanks for joining me. Bye. Come on.